All right, students, we are going to be working on our pressure system notes. Now, before you guys get started, you should have your blue pressure system notes glued into your notebook. We are going to follow along and we're going to complete in the different sections for, as you can see at the top, density. Let me go back and show you guys this on the notes. We're going to talk a little bit about how density relates to pressure systems. Then we're going to talk about what a high pressure system is to fill in this table. Then we're going to talk about what a low pressure system is to fill in this table. If you are not familiar with how a table works, it helps us organize key information about two different pieces. So we have a column for high pressure system and low pressure. As we go through each one, we'll be able to get this major information and recorded for each of them to compare side by side. So our learning target for today is, today I will describe high and low pressure systems so I can compare and contrast different systems and the weather they bring. I know I'm successful when I can find which days in my weather data have high and low pressure systems. This last piece, ladies and gentlemen, you have both a writing as well as multiple questions on your final test and quizzes related to this piece. So make sure you are getting your information down. Just some clear expectations before we get started. First, this is notes. As your teachers, we expect you to ask for clarification. This is your day to get this information. Ask for clarification if you need it. Second, you are following along and re-watching if needed. This is second quarter. The expectation is not that you get things the first time around, but you stick with it until you understand something. So if you need to re-watch, your job is to re-watch. Third, you use, and I cannot stress that enough, you use and possibly add to these notes throughout the week until we get to your quiz and we continue building on this throughout the quarter. So make sure you guys are following along and getting the best notes you can. Remember, there is a teacher copy to compare yours because you need to have this reference. So at the very top of your note sheet, there is a little bit about density. So we're going to write in some stuff to review there. At the very top, Density, the definition is how close those particles in an object are together. Remember, if you heat something up, those particles want to spread out and get a lower density. If you cool it down, those particles want to collect more. So in the boxes below, high density is the same thing as high pressure. That is where our particles are closer together. There is less space. So that's going to create more pressure and you would draw that in with a bunch of the dots close together. Low density is the same thing as low pressure, and that's where the particles are far apart. The weight, the mass of all those is spread out more, so it's not pushing down as much, and because there is more space between it, that's going to affect the weather and what we can see. Get that written in, and then we're going to move on. Now, you guys may have seen some pressure changes before. If any of you have dove underwater or gone up into the mountains, the pressure of the air shifts how high and how low you go through the Earth's atmosphere, causing your ears to pop to equalize. The universe always wants to be in balance. Our weather is no exception. So as you go to the top, all that air wants to expand out. There is less pressure as you go up. As you go farther down into the ocean, there is more pressure. You could think about this as maybe you have a bunch of cousins or little siblings who want to pile on. There is more stuff above you putting more pressure down on you, squeezing onto the air and the land below. Now, we're going to start talking about pressure system changes. What happens to our weather when the air is under high pressure? What's going to happen to our air when it's under low pressure? You have it labeled on your systems. There's Your sheet's going to look a little bit different. That's totally fine. But we're going to start talking about the differences between the two, particularly the density, whether they are 
a pushing or pulling force with that pressure and what kind of weather and data we would see with those major weather events. Type one, so on the very left side, we have your high pressure system. This should all go into what a high pressure system is. You do not have to write it word for word, but you should have these main ideas. First, high pressure system is an area of air where the air particles are pressed close together. So this air is going to be, because it's close together, air is a high density. And if you remember back to thermal energy, when the air is under high density or an object is high density, it wants to sink. So that means that in a high pressure system, the air is sinking, or for us, it would feel like it is pushing down on us, creating higher pressure. So that air is getting pushed down and out. Now, yours already has it there, but anytime you see a blue H, we're gonna think of that as a high pressure system. Once you get this stuff written in for what it is, move on for our next piece on weather patterns. Now a high pressure system is gonna bring a couple of different types of weather. So the main things that we would see and observe without any tools, high pressure is associated with nice weather. So keywords we would look for is like clear or sunny. So high pressure equals happy weather. Whether that's true or not for you, just go with it on us. Go with this. Um, now, as we're collecting our weather data, when we talk about pattern changes, we need time. So this has to be happening over two or more days. First of all, I would see an increase in the air pressure, hence the name a high pressure system. The pressure is getting higher. We would also see a decrease in the humidity. Now, there might be a storm that comes through, but as that pressure system comes through, it's gonna squeeze that air. There isn't any room for the water to go in the air, so we would see a decrease in humidity over time. We would also see a drop in cloud coverage because if there's no water, if you remember back to the water cycle, there's nothing to condense or form clouds with. Remember, this is not a one day thing, this is a pattern over multiple days. Once you have this typed in, we're ready to move on. Now, something to be clear, something to clarify here, and why we talk about patterns, high pressure has sunny and clear weather, but not all sunny and clear weather is going to be a high pressure system. There is more things like changes in the humidity, changes in the pressure. That's why we need to make sure that we're not just looking at the weather, we're looking at our data as well. Now, some analogies that you guys can think about is the first one, if you've ever blown down in a straw, or if you have like a, um, ah, shoot, what is it called? Um, an air compressor at home where you press down and it shoots air out, it spreads everything that it shoots at. So that's like what a high pressure system is. It's all that air forced down and it spreads out. The other analogy we would use, it's like when you squeeze a sponge. First of all, when high pressure pushes on a low pressure, that's when we're gonna start getting rain. So that squeezes the water out, creating rain. The other way that you can think about it is that with that squeezed hand, you put that sponge in the water. If it's squeezed, it's not gonna absorb water. There is just no space for that. Now we're gonna move on to the right column and we're gonna talk about type two low pressure systems. So the three things you need to write down for what it is, is this is where the air particles are far apart. That means that there is more space for water to get between my air molecules. Since the particles are far apart, it is the air in a low pressure system is low density. Because it's low density, that means it's going to lift, raise, pull, Another word we're going to use is it gets sucked up into the air like a straw. This is going to show up in analogies later on. So if we look at the guy right here on the GIF, we see that 
that low pressure air. It's because it's less dense, it is rising up. Now, let's talk about why this is a red L real quick. The reason why this L is red is because the thermal energy is increasing. That's what's causing the density to go down, causing the air to lift. Just as with high pressure, we use the blue H because that symbolizes cold. The air is getting more dense or it has higher pressure than the surrounding air, so it's going to sink down. Now, low pressure system is where we see all the fun weather, guys. This is the kind of weather that we're going to see with storms, other severe weathers, and just general like rain, snow, all that kind of stuff. So it's like the opposite of happy, clear, sunny weather. It's all the other stuff. So blizzards, hurricanes, tornadoes, rain, cloudy days. We often think of it as low as maybe like low in emotions or sad weather. So low pressure we think of with sad weather. Now, before we move on, let's talk about the kind of data we would see in a low pressure system. First, a decrease in the air pressure, hence the name low pressure system. Because there is more space in the air now, that's going to lead to an increase in the humidity. There's more water vapor in the air. That can also lead to an increase in the cloud coverage because, again, there's more water in the air to evaporate and condense in the water cycle. Let's talk about some analogies. First of all, because the air is being lifted up, that is a suction force. So that's like uh, drinking something through a straw or sucking up the air through a straw or like a vacuum cleaner. Vacuums create super low pressure that causes all of the air to get sucked into the vacuum to clean. This is also like a flat sponge because now if I take that flat sponge and put it in the water, there's all that air, all that space that the water can then push through and get soaked into the sponge. If there's any other examples you can think of for both high and low pressure systems, write them down. Let your teacher know. This is probably a good place for you guys to be thinking of other things maybe we're missing as teachers. Now, at the very bottom of your page, you guys are going to need to follow along because I am not going to write anything down for this you need to make sure that you are listening very carefully. Down at the bottom of your notes, as you can see, there is this thing about how pressure creates wind. Oh. So air is constantly moving and trying to balance out. It's always trying to move from a high source to a low source. So if I have my son, it's going to heat up my cold air that sinks to the ground. It's going to want to flow to low pressure. Eventually, it's going to rise back up, and it's going to create this convection current where the air is constantly cycling through as the air is heating up and cooling down. That wind is what moves our weather from place to place. So when we look at our data, when we look at our maps, when we see the clouds moving, it's because of these changes from high to low pressure. All right. So the last thing for you guys to think about is in the last column is how does this apply to our hail recipe? Think about we have our two pressure systems now. After everything we've talked about with the hail recipe, which one of these systems would we need in order to create a storm with hail? Make sure you write down your justification because this is all going to be tied together as we keep learning piece by piece for what it takes to fully make hail. And that's it.